السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Very good morning to all of you. Yeah, pretty chilly morning where I am right now. Alhamdulillah. Uh, and I was very much enthused by the words of Janab Nassar Sahib. Mashallah. Very valuable tips for the upbringing of children. Alhamdulillah. Well, a blessing for the wealth of knowledge that he shares. He continued with the series. <coughs> uh, before I continue, I would like to give one uh, bit of information that I'm not in the city. I'm in a rural locality. So maybe uh, the connection will become a little unstable sometimes. So kindly bear with me if, if my voice breaks. <coughs> so... We were discussing about the prophetic teaching methodologies and how he used to approach uh, the children and how he used to teach them. And one of the things that we were discussing of was how he used to question people, how he used to question his disciples. In fact, he never called them disciples. He, he, they were called as his sahaba, his companions. Uh, so effectively, they were his students. But how he used to talk to them, how he used to suggest to them uh, any information or knowledge that he wanted to share right once he asked uh, who is a muhajir and the sahaba responded uh, obviously the one who emigrated from one place to another maybe makkah from madina from makkah to madina and the prophet ﷺ replied that the person who emigrates and goes away from those things, out, right? Moving away from uh, the munkar, the things that, that are forbidden, that is hijrat, that is true, as we have been discussing last time. Uh, he could have easily said that he could have given a bit of a piece of information that uh, you must avoid sins, full stop, but he didn't do that. He posed a question, right? Posing of questions, making them, making people think is something critical. Right? Prophet Wasallam once posed a question, who is a bankrupt person? Uh, I can hear some background noise. I would request you to kindly switch off the microphone, please. The one whose microphone is on, if they can switch it off. So uh, the Prophet ﷺ asked, who is a bankrupt person? Right? The Sahaba replied, a bankrupt man amongst us is the one who has no dirham, no dinar, he has no wealth. Right? That person is bankrupt. Obviously, that's the obvious answer. The Prophet ﷺ said, the bankrupt person of my ummah would be the one who would come faster than a period and fasts and zakah. Lots of prayers, lots of fasts, lots of zakat. But he would have hurled abuses upon others. He would have hurled abuses upon others. He would have slandered others. And he would have unlawfully consumed the wealth of others. He would have unlawfully shed the blood of others. Now, what was the Prophet was trying to say? He was trying to say that the virtues of this person would be credited to the account of the one who suffered at his hands. And if his good deeds fall short to clear the account, then the sins would be transferred from the abused accounts, from the victim's accounts, and entered into his account, and he would be thrown into hell. Now, how did he do that? How did Rasulullah convey this message that on the day of judgment, if you abuse others or if you victimize others, they are good. your good deeds will get transferred to them and their good, bad deeds will get transferred to you. So he, he wanted to convey this message, right? There will be a mizan, there will be a balance that will be set up, right? But how did he convey that message? He did not tell them. He did not tell them directly this information. He asked them a question. Who is a bankrupt person? Was, was it necessary for him to ask that question? He could have directly given them information, but he didn't do that. That musalsal aapko nazar aayega. You will see that time and time again. His approach was that of questioning, was that of making them think, right? 
was that of kindling their imagination. Right? And we'll see many examples in the ensuing weeks. How he used to, you know, make them think, make them ponder. He many a times used to not most of the times, in fact, he used to never give ready-made answers. Right? Ready-made, as, as Samir Bhai always says, the ready-made answers are available on Google in today's era. It's easy, right? But Rasulullah used to practice exactly, precisely that. That approach which Samir Siddiqui Sahib always talks about, make them think, make them imagine something which is not ready-made information available in any data warehouse, any data bank, right? So asking them who is truly bankrupt makes them think. The Sahib are relating bankruptcy with what? People having no wealth, which is normal. But now he is upping the ante, Rasulullah He is truly taking them to a level where truly what bankruptcy is, right? Because Ibrahim alayhi salam, dunya se dekha jayega. He was bankrupt. Musa alayhi salam, dunya se dekha jayega. He was bankrupt. In the true sense, they were very wealthy. The Ambiya Karam, they were wealthy in the true sense, in the ultimate sense. Right? So that is how Rasulullah used to uh, ask questions. Even when uh, the famous uh, hadith of Jibreel alayhi salam, when he came and he asked questions to Rasulullah and right? he asked him five questions. What is Islam? What is Iman? What is Ihsan? Right? Then uh, what is you know the signs of the end times? Right? So uh, he, again, Jibreel alayhi salam could have come and given information but he didn't. He posed, even Rasulullah was posed questions. And the Sahaba were observing that famous hadith when Jibreel alayhi salam comes in, walks in, and uh, he does, nobody knows who this man is. And after Jibreel alayhi salam goes away, then Rasulullah introduces that, you do you know who he was? He was uh, Jibreel alayhi salam. Right? So again, Again, the pattern of questioning, right? Uh, when is the timing of the last time? These questions, right? So this is what it is. It's important. Another uh, question uh, uh, that Rasulullah Sallam asked to the Sahaba, who among you considers the wealth of his hairs dearer to him than his own wealth? Any? seen hai. Unki jo dolat hai, uski value aapke nazdik zyada hai. The hairs, their wealth is more valuable than your own wealth. Who among you thinks like that? Now the Sahaba said, obviously none among us would be like that. None among us would love his own wealth more. Everyone would love his own wealth more than the hairs wealth. That is natural. Everyone loves his own wealth more. Uh, then the Prophet ﷺ replied, Everyone loves his own wealth more. And your wealth is whatever, you, right? The wealth of your hair is whatever you leave after your death. Yani, jo aapne kharch kar diya, Allah ki mein, that is your true wealth. Or jo aapne bacha kar rakh diya, things that you kept to yourself. That is actually not your wealth because once you die, what happens to that wealth which you have kept to yourself? It would say, the Prophet is saying, وسلم, that the thing that you spend in the way of Allah is actually your putting it of use to you in the Akhirah. Right? That will be of your use. What you keep in balance is not going to be of your use because you are going to just transfer it to your hair. So if you love your own wealth more, you will spend it more in the path of Allah rather than keeping it balanced. Because what you keep in balance is not your wealth then because it gets transferred. So again, again, what do we see here? Rasulullah is questioning them. Who loves his wealth more? Uh, who loves his hair's wealth more than his own wealth? He's questioning them. He could have directly said, na? directly bhi to bol sakte the, ki bhai, dekho ji, you transfer it to in the cause of Allah and that is better for you. Full stop. Like a newsreader, he didn't do that. And many, many examples. Many examples. The Prophet once said, وسلم, who do you consider as a chief wrestler? Very champion wrestler. Who do you think is a champion wrestler? 
लड़ाई कुश्ती करने वाला एंड कंपेनियन सेड द साहबा सेड इन रेसल the one who cannot be defeated by other people he is the chief wrestler he is the champion wrestler the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says no self when in a fit of anger jab gussa aata hai when he is when he is in a fit of anger he controls himself he is a chief wrestler wrestler right wo sabse bada jo hai kushti baaz hai now again the prophet could have easily said na that control your anger that is a good thing for you full stop na He is asking them who is the chief wrestler. Why is to do that? Why is to ask unique questions, which sometimes are apparently not connected with what he is saying, what he wants to suggest, because he wants to up the ante. He wants them to think how much they can think before giving ready-made answers. Is to make them think. Is to make them ponder. Right. This is of critical importance. Right. This is very very important. So. Uh, <coughs> Uh, Hazrat uh, Umar ibn Khattab once. This is not uh, an example of uh, Rasulullah. This is the example of Umar ibn Khattab, but it's very relevant to this topic of questioning. Hazrat Umar ibn Khattab once asked, in the he was sitting in the companion of some Sahaba uh, when he became the Khalifa, and he asked them a question. <laughs> that uh, he asked them the question that i wish uh, wish for something he asked them, wish for something think about something wish so some sahabi said i wish that this place was filled with gold with gold this place so i could spend it for the sake of allah uh, then again hazrat umar repeated uh, okay wish for something and someone else spoke up he said i wish it was filled with pearls and ornaments and jewels so i could spend again spend them for the sake of allah and give them in charity these were very were well so that they can spend in charity right uh, but once the sahaba kept on saying these things then the sahaba said that oh amirul mu'minin uh, we do not know what to wish for exactly what do you want what kind of wish do you expect from us we are telling us our wish and we need we want we wish for we desire for wealth so that we can give in charity but then they said that uh, we want to know your wish uh, hazrat umar said i wish this place was filled with with men like muad ibn jabal right <clears throat> this place was filled with men like salim the freed slave of abu hudayfa this place was filled with men like hudayfa ibn al yaman right? so what was umar doing umar was suggesting hazrat umar was suggesting radhiyallahu anhu was suggesting a very very important point to the sahaba right because he was the amirul mu'minin he was the guide for the community at that time what was he doing said so he was he was showing that i am not concerned with wealth or money that much right that could be spent in the sake of in the path of allah that's important as important as it is but what is more important is people what is more important is quality individuals people with skills people with commitment people with passion people with imagination <clears throat> right so these are the kind of people i want to create i i value them more than the world. right because the sahaba did the portions when they overcame the uh, right but it, it was the quality of individuals the the uh, you know the strategies if you look at uh, maybe some other time we will have uh, a session on the, the strategies of hazrat khalid bin walid the strategies of saad ibn waqqas radiyallahu anhu when they were fighting against the persians and the romans in spite of the lack of resources right the capability that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam developed in them the commitment the depth of iman the imagination right the firasat the vision the ability to pierce the circumstances right this exactly. is the skill 
دیدن دل رب جزاك الله منا خير وآخر دعوانا إن الحمد لله رب العالمين جزاك الله خير جناب فرانسا ما شاء الله wonderful explanation of so many examples from the life of Sahaba Allah Taala gives us hidayah to follow